Hi, everybody. My name is Curtis, and I'm here with Clover Press, and we're talking today with David Nakayama, and we're going to be talking about this amazing art book that we have coming out called The Marvel Art of David Nakayama. And uh, so let's just get started with our interview. David, it's nice to talk to you today. Hello. Aloha from sunny Hawaii. How long have you been living in Hawaii? Uh, well, I was born and raised in Hawaii and I uh, was on the mainland for, uh, I don't know, about 12 years doing video game stuff. But our family has since moved back, so it's nice to be home. That's very good. Um, tell me a little bit about video games. How did you get into that industry? Well, I mean, like uh, it was a thing I've always been interested in, one of my hobbies. And when the opportunity presented itself, uh, I was very quick to give it a shot. It turns out my true love is comic books, though. So <laughs> after <laughs> after after a good 12 years, uh, I, we ended up uh, just reverting to form, going back to comics, where I'm doing cover art full time now. Right. So what was some of your earliest comic book work then? Well, uh, I originally broke into comics with Top Cow Productions, which is one of the image studios under Mark Silvestri. And uh, did a number of projects for them, including City of Heroes, which ended up getting me the job in games. And then uh, fairly soon after that, got work with Marvel, uh, including Marvel Adventures Hulk and Spider-Man, some of the uh, all-ages reader books, and then culminating with Big Hero 6 um, was my first big series where I did interiors and covers uh, and then I did games, and now I'm back as on covers. So let's talk a, a little bit about Big Hero Six. Of course, I think generally speaking, everybody knows it because of the uh, the Disney movie, but uh, it's very different. The comic book itself. Uh, yeah. What was your role in the creation of that title? Yeah, as you say, it's completely different in the comics, and uh, it was actually completely different before our team got a hold of it as well. I think it was originally created by the Man of Action folks, uh, right. Steven Siegel, Duncan Rouleau, uh, those geniuses. And then uh, Chris Claremont and I came aboard for a new five-issue miniseries that introduced characters like Wasabi and Fred, who, who do have a role in the movie. Um, but on top of that, we also visually redesigned every single character. So if you look at what Baymax originally started out as, he was a sort of a reptilian green monster. Uh, he was always a robot, but he was he looked like Godzilla. And uh, my take on that was if he's a robot, he should look like a Gundam. So uh, <laughs> I made him, I'll take credit for making him look like a robot and Disney can take credit for making him look like a pillow. Uh, and then... Uh, I'll also, I, I like to think that they borrowed a little bit of my hero redesigns as well for the main character. Now you worked with Chris Claremont. Was that thrilling for you? What a, what oh, a legend. Totally. Right. Like, uh, I am in comics because of, uh, Jim Lee's run on X-Men in particular, which he wrote all of. So it's a big deal, you know, not just Jim Lee's run, but many years before that, a lot of the, like the reason we all like X-Men now is you can, you can lay it right at the feet of Chris Claremont. So I told him this, you know, when we, when we met up after Big Hero 6 was done, uh, that's the one thing I wanted to tell him, like, you know, I'm a big fan. You're amazing. You're a legend. That's what I wanted to tell him. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what is the process like working with him? Uh, the, you know, script to you, page, that kind of thing. Ah, you know, it's been it's been a few years at this point. That was very early in my career, but I remember it being really uh, pleasant, really straightforward. It was very open ended. Uh, he would just uh, describe things fairly briefly. He, I, I remember it had sort of a a witty and jokey tone in the way that he described things. Very pleasant read. Uh, and tell me a little bit about uh, go, coming back into comics after taking a hiatus. Was it hard to jump back in? You know, it was so strange because I, you know, my heart was divided between comics and games. And, and I thought, okay, I, I, you know, I'm going to go do games for a while. But very quickly, su surprisingly quickly, uh, I found that I, my heart was longing to go do comics again. So even in the midst, even five years into the game thing, I started feeling like I missed it. I wrote back my old editors and I said, uh, hey, can I come back for some covers at least? You know, keep a, keep a toe in the water. Uh, so I found myself for the last seven years of video games, I'd work at the game company and then come home and work on covers because I missed comics that much. And so eventually my wife is like, 
why don't you just go back to doing this thing that you really love the most, you know? And I kind of had to admit she was right. <laughs> now, um, I hope we won't get in trouble for talking about something non-Marvel, but I absolutely love your Darkwing Duck covers. That <laughs> you've been doing. What a fun opportunity that is uh, to, do the, to, the, to do those. And Gargoyles, too. The Gargoyles ones are really great, too. Yeah, well, keeping in the Disney family, right? Um, the I I've mentioned already that I'm a huge fan of you know games and comics, and that also I would add Disney to that list. Like I'm just a giant nerd, you know, so yeah. I have fandom for all of these things. So if somebody's going to say, "Hey, do you want to draw gargoyles? Do you want to draw a Darkwing Duck or some of the other cool Disney stuff we have coming up?" Uh, I, I'm a very easy yes. That's really fun for me. I. I at this point, the only things I even want to do are fueled by my fandom. If you see me taking something on at all, it's because I'm a fan of that thing. Ah, wow. Now, you don't do any interior work anymore. Is that because um, you just want to concentrate on covers, or do, would you jump on that opportunity if it came up again? So it's a logistical thing, really. Like when I started off my career, Big Hero 6, Marvel Adventures, I did that for many years. Um, and it takes a long time to draw interiors uh, for a comic. It's a full month of work just to do the pencils. And in my experience, unfortunately, uh, I would pass it off to other artists and kind of watch the results um, deteriorate a little bit, I'm sorry to say. Um, I wasn't happy with the work in the end uh, a lot of the time. Um, so I, maybe I'm a control freak. I don't know, but it uh, it didn't really work for me. And I find that the only way I can get the results I really want is to do the whole thing soup to nuts, you know, like uh, plan the whole thing, draw the whole thing, color the whole thing. Then it, it really feels good to me. It feels like it's cooking. So uh, cover art, I think, is the right thing for me. How do you go about drawing a cover? Do you get suggestions from the editors or do, you, do they let you just kind of do what you want to do? It totally varies. You know, sometimes the editor will have a very specific vision of what they want. Uh, sometimes, yeah, one, once or twice, even with a little sketch. Um, so I'm, I, I can just execute. That's rare, though. What, more often than not, they might provide a prompt or they might be totally open ended. That that's fairly fairly frequent. Where it's like, pitch us. <laughs> you know, what do you, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, we need this character on it. Go. <laughs> and do you prefer that, or would you rather have a prompt? I kind of like the mix, you yeah. know, like uh, I, I, a part of the fun of doing covers is it's this puzzle that you're trying to solve, you know, like, and the, the variables that go into the puzzle are different every time. You sometimes will have a lot of input, sometimes not. Sometimes you're on a personal, you know, journey to try something new. Uh, so like, for example, the magazine covers that I worked on uh, was just me trying to uh, use those graphic design classes that I had in college to to come up with something that people hadn't really seen a lot or, or at all before. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's what I really like about covers in general. If you step back, that's the fun part about it, is the puzzle solving. Now, did was that all your concept or was that something that the editor was like, we would love to see something like this? Uh, in this case, I get to take the credit for that one. Uh, nice. What they offered me was... Um, they wanted, we, we all knew we wanted to do Hellfire Gala themed covers. And, you know, Marvel had already released red carpet themed covers. Perfect. Uh, some, I think Pepe Larraz had drawn a great, like descending the staircase uh, cover. So that was all covered um, or, or, or done already. And I was thinking about the theme of high fashion and realized there was an opportunity. Like, what about a high fashion magazine? It's perfect for the Hellfire Gala and perfect as a new cover theme. Uh, so it just worked out uh, just better than we expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they look fantastic. I really like the concept that you have on some of your covers where you have like a solid build color in the background and you incorporate and sort of blend the costume into that. Can you tell me a little bit about coming up with that concept? Great, yeah. Um, so I call that particular style color bleed. And what it is, is it's it's a take on negative space covers. We've all seen negative space covers before where let's say Cyclops is blue and yellow and the background is yellow. So you only draw the blue parts and none of the yellow. And the problem I have with that, the reason I don't love that style for myself, other people do it great, but for myself, I don't love it because if yellow, if Cyclops is yellow gloves on a yellow background, now Cyclops doesn't have a hand. 
you know, that that's, that's awkward. And I, I don't love that part about it. So color bleed is my attempt to have my cake and eat it too. You know, like, uh, I, you still get that juxtaposition of what is three-dimensionally rendered in the skin tone and the accessories and things like that, but it's contrasted with the absolute flatness of yellow, like flat yellow, flat yellow in the background and the figure. So Mm -hmm. I like to think that it's everything cool about negative space, but without the disadvantages of negative space. And I'm not going to say I invented it. I saw Frank Cho do a similar thing on the cover of his art book many years ago, Um, but I, I wanted to use the technique, oh, and also 1960s illustrators, I should say, uh, but I wanted to use the technique on a broad range of superheroes. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, it's very effective. I love the ones with, um, you've done a couple with uh, Scarlet Witch, and we're going to use one of them actually for the cover of the book here. <laughs> uh, they segue into yeah. that, where it's just, it's so, it's so uh, in your face because it's just red, bright red. And uh, and it really makes the other parts of the part that 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 are not red stand out so much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you've you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, in art school, they'll say, "Oh, you have to have contrast. It's very important to have contrast. If your character is orange, your background better be blue." Like that's the standard rule in art school. But what they don't tell you is, uh, you know, in in this case, it just sets a different contrast. It makes the face the contrast, and everything else goes to the background. So I think. My theory of it is that the viewer becomes engaged, right? Their brain has to do a little work and that involves them in a way that some covers do not. Um, so that is my theory about why people like this cover and and why this is the perfect uh, thing to be the cover of our book. Of course, it had to be a color bleed. Of course, it had to be Scarlet Witch. It's 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 just the right thing for, for the cover of my book. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get into the book, I just want to talk about your creative process a little bit. Uh, I know you do a lot of your work digital. Do you start digital or do you start on paper? It depends. Um, digital is faster for sure. Um, but when I have time, I prefer uh, to make uh, you know the original on paper. It certainly makes more money. <laughs> I wish I could uh, do that all the time, but it, for for uh, speed issues, I, I primarily do digital. But there are plenty of of covers out there that I that I happen to have done uh, by hand. It's just a speed issue. How how long would you say you spend on average on a cover? Uh, I think the the fastest I've ever done a cover, and this is very rare, is about one day. Um, an average cover, I usually put about three days on my calendar for it. Um, just so that I'm killing myself, uh, you know, just working constantly for like two days, for example, but, uh, they can go, I found out (laughs) up to about two weeks. (laughs) I did a double, double cover featuring all the X-Men on the, uh, at poolside, an homage to the famous Jim Lee, wish you were here, uh, Mm X-Men number one pinup. Uh, that took a solid two weeks. That was wow. a lot of X Men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was two. That's it was two amazing. covers. <laughs> that's still that's that's. I guess the more characters you shove in there, the longer it's going to take for sure. Yeah, that's partially, mostly true. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about this book, the Marvel Art of David Nakayama. So this is going to be the third book in our series. Uh, is this your first art book, or have you done art books before? Yeah, that I think uh, one underreported big piece of news here. This is my first ever art book of any kind. I've never made a convention sketchbook, a convention art book. I've not made those things that artists make themselves. None of that. I've never had any kind of art book before or sketchbook before. This is my first one. And to come out in such style, you know, hardbound with all the bells and whistles, with the production quality that Clover's got, uh, what a way to start. You know, I'm spoiled now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's it's very exciting. And I think the the just the vibrancy of all of your covers is going to show off really, really well on these pages. And it's a it's definitely a contrast to the a little bit more sketchy or abstract stuff that's coming from David Mack and Alex Malieve from the previous books that we're doing. So we get a, a really nice variety of having you come in and show this wonderful pop art. And uh, each page is going to be just brilliant. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm really excited to to join the group and be a part of the mix. Like the uh, the previous volumes are beautiful, of course. Those guys are amazing. Um, I, I think as a group, we're really offering a lot of variety for fans. 
So you've been choosing the artwork along with uh, Ravi uh, uh, as to what's going to be compiled in this book, right? So I've been choosing the, the, the works myself, going back through all my archives that I have fortunately saved on my hard drives all these years. Uh, this goes all the way back to about 2007 because I'm old wow. as dirt. Uh, and uh, I have just been, uh, you know, trying to have a comprehensive uh, selection of material, but also cherry picking a little bit, the best stuff. I, we can't include it all. There's hundreds and hundreds of things to, to go through. Uh, so I think people will find that what is in the book is, is absolutely comprehensive and also the best uh, that I have had to offer in my whole career. Are we going to go back as far as Big Hero 6? I think there's one cover that I've selected from that run uh, of the six that I did uh, for the book. I would say it's my my best one from the run, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then what else can we expect to see from this book? Is it going to be just like finished covers? Or are we going to see some concepts or unreleased stuff? Uh, we are going to stick with the finished covers. So we're looking for gallery quality, you know, page after page, nothing but the best stuff. Uh, my sketches aren't aren't awesome. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> They're pretty <laughs> sketchy. Uh, the way I work is I like to figure things out uh, as I'm going. So my sketches are incredibly loose. Uh, embarrassingly so, I would say. <laughs> like, if you're an editor, I've seen sketches from other artists. They're little masterpieces, and mine are like <laughs> chicken scratch. But like I said, uh, what's fun for me is figuring it out on the page. So I don't think we're missing anything by not including my process work. <laughs> okay. Um what are some of your favorite pieces that you we are going to showcase in this book? It's a funny thing, you know, to look back at, at over 10 years of work, because on the one hand, there's so much cringe about looking back at your old stuff. But on the other hand, sometimes it's pleasantly surprising to go back and, and see something you hadn't in a while and go, hey, this wasn't so bad. This was pretty good. I'm still proud of this. Uh, so, so yeah, there, there will be a mix of old favorites. Uh, I think people will be surprised and delighted to see some stuff they maybe had no idea I worked on. Uh, Rocket Raccoon springs to mind. I did, did a whole run of Rocket Raccoon covers. Did everyone know that? Also, I don't think you know, I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most people probably don't. Um, there are also, you know, I, I did the original X-Men DVD, um, box art for that release way back in the day of the animated series. I don't know if people wow. know that we've got the first one of those in here. Uh, we've got never before published in print video game artwork. I'm really proud of a piece I did for Marvel future revolution. Uh, that's going to be in the book. And yeah. then of course, all, all the way up to brand new stuff. Uh, like the Hellfire covers, like the color, believe almost all of those, if not all of those will be in the book. Okay. Wow. That's fantastic. Now, what do you hope the fans will get out of seeing an art book of yours? I think it, it, people have been asking for this for a long time. There are many, many fans who have said, Hey, when's that art book? You know, I'm like, ah, I'm working on it. I've been saying that for literally years. So <laughs> I think for a lot of people, this is, this is finally delivering on that promise. Uh, it's about time. It's really overdue, actually, to, to have an art book. And I think people will be shocked at the level of quality, uh, you know, if there, since there hasn't been one before. Um, and then going to, to like, the, the top of the line that we're offering here, the, the production quality on this thing, the comprehensiveness of this thing, the hard boundness, you know, like, all of that is going to be... I think shocking to people. They'll they'll be hopefully delighted that that the first one out of the gate is is like the be all end all definitive collection. <laughs> it will it'll have a very special place on everybody's bookshelf. It's going to be a wonderful wonderful book. Absolutely. Uh, so I want to encourage everybody to check out the Kickstarter. I'll put the link down below here, and it's running currently. So if you can uh, become a backer today, we would totally appreciate that and check out all of the amazing rewards that will come along with it. So thank you, David, for chatting with us today. It's been wonderful talking with you. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to see the finished product and hold it in our hands. Very exciting. Couldn't be more excited. Thank you so much for, for being part of it and for uh, sharing with everybody here today. 